but um but i think for me i mean for for people that aren't familiar with your story mm -hmm. and you're a humble guy so you probably won't say it but i'll let them know like you are one of the probably the most accomplished um collegiate wrestlers um and especially out of the state of new jersey i think if not arguably the number one um you won two national championships at penn state is it that um well i was an all-american at penn state um I was on a I was on full scholarship at for Monmouth University. So my freshman and sophomore year, I started uh, as with football. So I took okay. two years off from wrestling. Okay. And then when I came back to wrestling after those two years of football, I came back for a full scholarship at Penn State, who had already won a national title. Okay. But it took me like a couple years to get my my bearings back. You know, two years out of wrestling is a long time, and yeah. then to compete at that level. And I got I got hurt the end of my junior year, which set me back. But you know, um, I put in a lot of work that summer uh, with rehab and everything. And you know, I finished my career good. I was able to All American my last year at Penn State. But you were a top recruit coming out of high school, right? For wrestling, yeah, I was uh, the number one heavyweight in the country my junior and senior year. I won three state titles. So the, okay, so it was the three state titles. And then why did you why did you go to football right out of high school then? Um. That was like my first love, you know. Okay. I was I was really accomplished in, in wrestling. Um, I had gotten you know the all state all mm -hmm. all county accolades with football for high school, but it's you know my team wasn't winning championships. We my best season at in, at my high school was like five and six. Yeah. So you're not really getting recognition mm -hmm. unless your team's really yeah. winning or you're carrying them to victory. So I wanted to continue playing football and. You know, I was just blessed to be able to have the opportunity to wrestle um, once I decided to go back to that. And what position you play at football? Defensive tackle. Ooh. Yeah, I was three. I was three oh five, solid. So that's like you know, that's like what I. And you're what nineteen twenty? Yeah, yeah. And you're and you're how tall? Uh, five eleven. Yeah, so you you pack the shit. So you're five eleven, three oh five at like nineteen years old, eighteen. What what? I uh, like. 19, 18, yeah. How I, big were you when you were 15? I've been 200, over 200 for a while now. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> I but was you're, a, but you're like a shred, like you're a muscular. You're not like a like a fat 215 or 300. Yeah, I mean, I was I wrestled 215 freshman year. Um, but, uh, you know, I also wrestled heavyweight. I was, I was like 220. So I would cut down to wrestle 215. It kind of just depended on where the coach needed me, who the tougher opponent was. So in, in high school, when I became a sophomore, I kind of grew into that heavyweight size and you know, the rest is history from there. Wow. So then you, so you played football a couple years. Um, and then what's, so you, like, what was the decision to go wrestling? Again? Um, wasn't having, like, I, like I, we weren't really winning at yeah. Monmouth, you know, and I was messing up. I was doing the wrong things and, you know, it just wasn't, I had lost the passion. Yeah. So... I needed a fresh start. I needed to get away from home. You know, Monmouth University is 30 minutes from where I live, yeah. so I had a lot of friends that would come up and come visit me. I'm on full scholarship, big man on campus. Yeah. When I went to Penn State. Big partier? Uh, no, not so much anymore, but definitely when I first went time. to college. Yeah. yeah, that Monmouth was uh, definitely an awakening for me, and a lot of lessons were learned right. during that period. And when I went to Penn State, my, my act was right, and I just wanted to prove myself and do better. So... I mean, and also Penn State's got one of the best wrestling programs in the country, correct? Absolutely. They had already won national titles when I went there. So then how do you convince a coach, hey, I, I know I was a great high school wrestler. Can I get a full ride again? I just played two years of football, but, like, I want to come back, do the wrestling thing. Give me a full ride. How's that, what's that conversation like? Well, actually, when I decided to, uh, to go into the transfer portal, news had broke out that I was looking to go wrestle, and the first coach that had called me up was Scott Goodell, you know, um, to, to go uh, back to wrestling. He had offered me a full scholarship, and I had talked to him, had talked to Coach uh, Dresser from Virginia Tech at the time, had talked to Tom Ryan, all the guys that had reached out to me when I was a senior, still believed I, you know, had what it takes to compete at yeah. that level. But what really set me up with Kel was the fact that you know, I'm studying, getting ready for midterms. And yeah, I'm not making a decision. I'm just, you know, looking to see what coaches come to offer me. And my mom calls me up one day after I take the test and, uh, you know, I'm just packing up my stuff, you know, getting ready to head home. And she's like, Jimmy, hurry up. Kale Sanderson and Cody Cunningham are here from Penn State. And, 
it's crazy at the time because I had just watched him. Like at this time, I already knew I was going back to wrestling, so yeah. I started to follow what was going on at that at the college level. And they, I saw them on TV win national titles yeah. with David Taylor and Ed Ruth, and everybody knows that's what started our dynasty run. And um, to see them in my living room when I when I walk in was a was a crazy experience and you know it's it's crazy every time I tell someone that but you know it's something I got to experience and you know they offered me a full ride and at that point how do you say no wow damn so then was it was a transition back into wrestling difficult yeah um first my body was completely into football yeah. and they had bulked me up like I said I started my freshman and sophomore year as a defensive tackle um, for Monmouth University, and they had bulked me up to 305. So just getting used to that type of uh, attrition you need, like wrestling is such a, yeah. like the leverage, the, the low level is the same, but when you're playing a uh, position like defensive tackle, like what my body does opposed to what it does in wrestling is different. You know, that stop and go, stop and go up here, uh, composed to like just having a, like a steady motor, just constantly going. Damn. And so, then you have a very successful career at Penn State, mm -hmm. um, and then what? So then, and so you try out for the Jets, correct? Then you try to go back into football. Yeah, well, when I graduated, um, actually, it was like one of the last days we were having like practices and stuff before school broke out. Like I stayed to do the camp, the wrestling camps over the summer, and um, I guess Coach Franklin, he was, you know, we have ties with uh, the football team. Mm -hmm. Someone had connected. Uh, one of the jet scouts to to me and at the time he was a scout for the cowboys something that happened yeah. and if people want to know how that works like you know usually you have scouts and those scouts are usually what how at least how someone like me would get an opportunity in the nfl and he was a scout for the cowboys and when he went to the jets kind of like i kind of like that's where my opportunity went and um after playing a, a year of like arena football going to gather that film because i hadn't played football mm -hmm. since my freshman, sophomore year, they're not really looking at that film. They want to see what I can do now. And so I did that for a couple of years before I got the opportunity with the Jets and wasn't really ready for that yeah. opportunity. And, uh, you know, that's when I decided to go to MMA. And um, they opened, they welcomed me with open arms in San Jose, California, and AKA, and the rest was history. Yeah, for people who are listening who aren't big MMA fans, I mean, AKA is arguably one of the best camps in the country. Um, you know, had you know, headlined by DC, Daniel Cormier, um, and Khabib does some of his work over there too. I mean, you, I mean, that's, it's a room full of killers. Absolutely. Um, you know, just being someone like me, I had the opportunity to learn from DC and Kane. I was both their sparring partners for their camp, you know, Kane for when he came back and tried to make his run, uh, when he was Against preparing for him. Yeah. 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 I was with him the entire camp for that. And then with DC for the, the trilogy, well, for all the fights except for the last one with Mia Chick. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't done so already, please make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Instagram at felix.levine, and if you have something to say, please leave a comment.